Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. Today, uh, we're tackling this question that I'm sure is on the mind of anyone who's just started to get into web development. Yeah. Laravel or Django. Right. It's a big decision. It is. These are frameworks, and these can make or break your project. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of like choosing the right foundation before you build a house. Absolutely. You wouldn't want to build your website on something flimsy, right? It's all about finding that best fit for what you need. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. And thankfully, the source material we've got for you today breaks it down in a way that even high schoolers can understand. Yeah. No complex jargon here. I love that about it. Just clear comparisons to help you make a smart choice. And what I think is interesting is that by making it simple, we really get to the core of what makes each framework special. Okay, so let's dive in. First mm -hmm. up, Laravel. Imagine Laravel as that approachable coding buddy that's always down to help you out. So Laravel is built on PHP. And as you probably know, PHP is a language known for being beginner friendly. Yeah. It uses something called MVC architecture. Okay. Model View Controller. Mm -hmm. Now think about it like this. You're organizing the tools in your workshop so everything's got its place. Makes sense. And it just makes the whole building process smoother. Right, it does, it does. Our source points out that Laravel is known for being pretty easy to learn especially with its huge and supportive online community. And having that readily available support is a game changer, especially for beginners. It is. When you're learning something new and you get stuck, chances are someone in the Laravel community has already been there. It's true. And they've figured out a solution. It's like having this global team of coding buddies on standby 24 seven, ready to help you troubleshoot any little thing you run into. I like that. And, you know, speaking of making things easier, Laravel has all these built-in features that just save you so much time. Yeah. Like, like user authentication. That's yeah. all the login stuff. Mm -hmm. Routing, how all the different pages on your website connect to each other. Okay. And caching, which helps your site load really fast. Yeah, those are all things that can be real-time syncs if you have to build them from scratch. Exactly. And these are all essential parts of almost every website, but Laravel just takes care of them for you. It really streamlines everything so you can focus on what makes your project unique. Exactly. Yeah. And our source also highlights Laravel's rich ecosystem. I like that. It sounds impressive. It does. And a big part of that is the Blade templating engine and the Eloquent ORM. Oh. Now, before you tune us out thinking this is going to get too technical, yeah, it's really not. Okay, good. Because these are actually really cool. Okay. So imagine you're making an online store. Okay. With Blade, you could design just one template for your product page and it'll automatically populate with the correct details for each product. Wow, so like the name, the price, the images. Exactly, you don't have to write separate code for every single item, so it's a huge time saver. So much easier. And then you've got the Eloquent ORM, and what this does is it simplifies how your website talks to its database. Oh, okay. It's like having a translator that ensures that your site and its data storage can communicate perfectly. So they're speaking the same language. Exactly. That's great for beginners. It is. Because databases can be a little intimidating at first. For sure. And, you know, even with all these advantages, it's important to remember that no single framework is perfect. That's true. Our source points out that Laravel can sometimes get a little bit slow when it has to deal with really complex applications. Interesting. If you're building something like a small online shop, you're probably fine. Yeah. But if you want to build the next Amazon, you might run into some performance issues. So it's not that Laravel is slow. It's just that as your project grows and gets more complex, you might start to see things slow down a bit. Yeah, it's kind of like you can drive a really reliable sedan across the country. Right. But a sports car is probably a better choice if you need that extra speed and agility. I like that. And another thing to think about is that because Laravel is built on PHP, you have to find a hosting service that supports PHP, which isn't always as common or as affordable as some other options. That's a good point. Now, before we move on to Django, which has its own set of advantages, okay. let's pause here for a second and talk to you, the listener. Yeah. If you are completely new to web development, is there anything we've said so far that's surprising to you? Anything that's not quite clear? We're happy to explain anything. Don't be shy. It's a lot to take in when these concepts are totally new. Exactly. And speaking of a different approach, let's switch gears over to Django. Okay, let's do it. So, if Laravel is that friendly coding buddy, Django's like that efficient, elegant one you know. Right. Less small talk, more substance. I like that, yeah. Django's all about writing clean code that just works, getting things done right. 
and it's built on Python, which, as you may or may not know, is known for being really readable mm -hmm. and also for being super versatile. Very versatile, yeah. And remember how Laravel uses that MVC architecture? Well, Django, it has its own spin on that. Of course it does. Called MTV, Model Template View. Okay. It's basically the same concept, just with slightly different names for things. Sure. But the important thing is that both frameworks really emphasize organization, which is so crucial when you're building anything for the web. Yeah, and this is kind of where that steeper learning curve comes in that we talked about earlier. Right. Django, it might take a little bit more time to wrap your head around at first, especially compared to Laravel. Sure. But the thing is, that initial investment of time, it often really pays off in the long run. Yeah, it's kind of like investing in a good pair of hiking boots. Okay, I like that. You know, they might take a little bit of breaking in. Yeah. But once they are, you're good to go, ready for any terrain. That's a good analogy. Our source raves about Django's rapid development advantage. And there's a reason for that. Which basically means you get to write less code. And it's all about efficiency. And achieve more. And that is like music to a developer's ears. Yeah. Right? It is, yeah, because Django gives you the tools so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Exactly. You can focus on the unique aspects of your project. And let's not forget about security. Oh, yeah, that's huge these days. Huge these days. And Django does not mess around. No, it does not. Built-in protection against SQL injection, cross-site scripting, all these kind of scary things. It's like having a top-notch security system for your website. Exactly. You can relax knowing you've got those safeguards in place. Peace of mind. Yeah. Especially in the world we live in today, that is priceless. For sure. For sure. But here's another thing I really like about Django. You know how some websites, they've got those clunky backends. Oh, tell me about it. It's like, who designed this? Nightmare. Django is different. Django has this super user-friendly admin interface. Oh, nice. It just automatically generates this clean, easy-to-use interface for managing your website's data. That's really important. So you can do things like edit content, you can manage users, you can track you know, all the analytics. Even if you're not super technical. Yeah, you don't have to be a coding whiz to figure it out. That's a big selling point for Django. It is. It makes it accessible to a wider range of people. It's like having a personal assistant for your website. I like it. Now, remember how we were talking about Laravel and how it can struggle with those bigger, more complex projects? Yeah. Well, Django is built to scale. Yeah, can handle it. It's like that reliable friend that you can always count on no matter what. What's the analogy we can use here? Let me think. Okay. I'm if remember. you need to handle, like, a sudden surge in traffic or if you're dealing with tons of data, right. Django's got you covered. Okay, so imagine a really sturdy bridge. Right. Okay. Built to withstand a ton of traffic. Yeah. And then compare that to like a small footbridge. Right. Might not hold up so well under pressure. I like it. That's kind of the difference. Perfect analogy. Laravel Django. And then on top of that, if you're thinking about APIs, you know, those things that allow different applications to talk to each other. Yeah. Think about how your food delivery app can talk to the restaurant system. Right. Seamless communication. Django's got a really great framework for that too called the Django REST framework. Which kind of does exactly what it says, right? right? It does what it says on the tin. Streamlines that process of building those connections. Yeah, super useful. So you've got all that rapid development, really strong security features, user-friendly, scalable. Django does sound kind of amazing. Right? It oh. does, it does. But yeah. like we said before, though, right? It's not about saying one of these is better than the other. Right, it's about picking the best tool for the job. It's all about, you know, trade-offs. Yeah, exactly. And what works for you and your project. Totally, and I think... Our source material really nailed it with the concluding points. Okay. So they said, if you're comfortable with PHP already, or if you're just starting out and you really like that idea of a big community and tons of tools that can help you along the way. That support system. Exactly. Yeah. Then Laravel is a great place to start. Yeah. It's like having that safety net when you're first starting out, which is so important. It is. It is. But... You know, if Python is more your thing, if you need that rapid development edge, if you need that security from day one, right. and you think you're going to need some serious horsepower down the line, Django might be a better fit for you. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to break it down. So out of curiosity, mm. what are your biggest takeaways when you compare these two? Well, I think the big one for me is that there's no one right answer. Yeah, it really depends. It depends what you're comfortable with. And what you need it to do. What your project needs. Yeah. Let's say you're making it's a simple blog, right? Laravel's ease of use and all those resources that are available make it super appealing. Oh, yeah, for sure. But if you're thinking bigger, you know, like a huge e-commerce 
platform, yeah. something that needs to be able to grow. Right, handle a lot of traffic. Exactly, Django's built for that. And those security features are essential when you're dealing with sensitive customer data. It's almost like choosing you know, different ways to get around. Okay, I like that. You can ride your bike to the store down the street. Sure. No problem, that's easy. Efficient even. But you're not gonna ride your bike across the country, you're gonna want a car for that, <laughs> right? Exactly, different tools for different jobs. And if you're moving a ton of stuff, you're gonna need a truck. <laughs> Makes it. So, yeah, <laughs> it all depends what you're trying to accomplish. Think but. about your needs. Choose your vehicle. <laughs> I like that. So as we wrap up this deep dive, we want to leave you all with one final thought to ponder. Okay, shoot. In today's world, everything moves so fast. It does. Speed is everything online, right? right and so is security. Absolutely. And the ability to adapt. Things change so quickly. So with that in mind, how could understanding both Laravel and Django, how could that give you an edge? Even if you just learn a little bit about both. That's a great question to end on. Because you never know what the future holds. And you might find yourself needing to use one or the other. Or both. Or both. You never know. That's something to think about, right? It is food for thought. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everybody. We'll see you next time.